Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Ward King, also known as the Stigma Crusher. And here in this channel, we deal with issues of mental health and mental illness from my twin perspectives as a person with lived experience of bipolar 2 disorder, as well as a person with a PhD in experimental psychology. Does that sound like your jam? You would be right at home here and welcome. If you want to go ahead and press that subscribe button, and if you would also like to be notified each and every week when I post, hit that notifications button as well. Well, with that, I guess it's time that we start stigma crushing for this week. Hey guys, so this week we are going to talk about mental illness and the workplace. This is not the topic of mental health at work. That's going to be for next week. Rather, this particular topic is to look at what it's like when you're living with mental illness to continue to thrive at work. So some stats for you. Uh, we are working up in Canada, if you are not welcome. Um, and in Canada, 30% of disability claims are attributed directly to mental illness. The cost of mental illness in the workplace exceeds $50 billion annually. 82% of workers who identify as having mental illness or a mental health issue say that it, it affects their work greatly. How could it not? There are all kinds of aspects of working that mental illness would directly affect. Mental illness affects cognition, so the way that we think about things, the way we reason, the way we remember. It affects emotion, which would greatly affect how we interact in the workplace, for example, but also how we deal with our own emotions while we're working alone, particularly if you're working by yourself in your home, like many of us are now. And finally, energy. Energy is hugely affected by mental illness. It, it kind of doesn't matter what mental illness you got. Energy is either ramped up or down low. And all of these things can't help but affect the way that we do our jobs, even if we don't want them to. For me, one thing that I've noticed uh, that is affected um, by my mental illness and, and affects my job is the ability to manage and juggle things like appointments. So when I first started working, I was already struggling with mental illness and I wasn't, I was in the closet, so to say. I wasn't telling anybody at work, no way, no how, that I had anything resembling a mental illness or even a mental health issue. And what I found really str th that I struggled with is that I had to take time to go to the psychiatrist, time to go to the therapist, time to go to my actual family doctor, time for just mental health days or illness in general. And that's not to mention the other things that happen like childcare issues or, you know, just not feeling yourself because you've got the flu. With all of these issues, potentially coming together at a head, I was really, really struggling. I couldn't take my time off properly. Uh, I was taking time as vacation that should have been taken as sick, sick time just because I didn't want to admit or, or, you know, allow others to find out that I was struggling with a very nasty illness. And it's important to think about uh, when you are struggling with mental illness and trying to work, is there a point at which you become unable to work or that you shouldn't for your own health and your own safety, you shouldn't be working? And of course, um, you know, that can happen when you just get too unwell and you're not doing your best job, you're not able to meet your deadlines. You're finding that you're, you know, um, your, your boss is yelling at you, you're slipping at work, not a good thing for your career either. And um, something that, that I experienced with regards to that 
was when I was getting more and more unwell. This was actually just before I ended up uh, having a, a full treatment uh, with electroconvulsive therapy. So it was getting to that point. But I was just so fatigued. I was exhausted. Now, with the job that I was doing, I could kind of be go, go, go for a while and then take a rest. And even just, you know, taking a rest, sitting at my desk wasn't working. I was working at a really super progressive place. And what we actually figured, I was able to come out to my boss there and I was able to, to talk about my experience with mental illness. And what that allowed me to do was to be able to precisely state for the boss what I needed in order to be able to do my job. And so I was able to say, you know, I need 20 minutes of, of rest, of literally sleep in between my different tasks that I was doing. And we came to the agreement that I would bring in, you know those, um, I think they call them zero gravity chairs. I would bring in one of those. It's just, you know, a, a, a lawn chair or a deck chair and take it out when I needed to take uh, um, 20 minutes of rest, close my door off and take 20 minutes of literally sleep on this zero gravity chair in my office. It was the most progressive um, I've, I've ever seen, um, but my boss was not concerned with, was I spending every moment of my day doing working things and much more concerned with, can I achieve what I am, have been asked to achieve and how can I best keep my health? So that was a, a magical place to work, uh, but it uh, really did show me that, you know, even when there are some things that are really, really challenging to overcome when you're ill, um, that they can be overcome if you have the right kind of mindset to it and if everybody's able to be at the table. Now I've mentioned the I've told my boss and the I haven't told my boss. Um, this one's a, a, t a t tricky one um, because certainly stigma is there and uh, some bosses may not be enlightened enough and aware and educated enough to know how to work with you when you do have a mental illness at work. Um, so it's, it's definitely not a, like, let's tell everybody all the time kind of thing. Um, but if you do choose to disclose, as I mentioned, you get a lot more ability to work with your needs and the, the needs of your work. Um, but also you are able to work with your boss in terms of workplace accommodate other workplace accommodations. Um, and it's important to note that yes, while this is a, a great way to be, um, it is not required, at least in Canada, it is not required that a person tell their boss what illness they have. They don't need to give a diagnosis in order to get a workplace accommodation. All you have to do is disclose what it is that you need in order to do your job. And so uh, an example I can give for mine um, is that at one point I was having a hypomanic episode and I was hearing things behind me, um, voices, whispers behind me that I knew were not there. And the only problem was it was very disruptive. So I would, you know, be sitting, working at my desk, of course, you know, in a kind of, there's people on, on either side of the row. So there's me and then someone behind me and someone next to me. And I was finding it really difficult because every time I would hear them, I would just kind of instinctively like, oh, look, look behind me for what, what voices are there. Um, and what my boss and I at that point were able to determine um, was that I could get a desk that had my back to the wall. And, uh, and, and you know, I didn't know if that would work, but we tried it. And with my back to the wall, I wasn't at all concerned to look. I, I, it was obvious, uh, it was instinctive that there was nothing there and I was able to focus on my work again. Um, that was another pretty enlightened boss uh, that, that wasn't afraid when I said that I was hearing voices that were behind me but that 
you know, didn't bother me and I knew they weren't there. Uh, a lot of bosses would, uh, would not be um, as open to that. Uh, so I was, I was really fortunate to have that boss as well. But it is important to notice, to note that you don't have to be as out as I am. You don't have to let folks know what diagnosis you have. You just have to be able to say what it is that you need. And so I could have very easily gone to my boss and said, you know what? I'm really distracted. I need to work with my back to the wall just for the next you know, few weeks. Can I be accommodated? If no, well then, then you've kind of got a case because there's no reason why not. Um, uh, you know, unless it's uh, the, the, the employer would uh, be you know, in a really bad place if they did. Um, so it, it does depend on what your needs are, um, but don't feel like you have to ex disclose uh, what you're dealing with. Stigma is real, and you know what? Even just your privacy is real, and so that's important to note. 38.6% of employees would not disclose their man to their manager if they were experiencing a mental health issue. Nearly 40% of people wouldn't disclose, and that is their right, but it does make some things more difficult. Are you out usually is a question uh, for, well, for my, also my community, the LGBTQ2 community, um, and that's where we most often talk about being out, but I talk about it being out as a person with mental illness as well, because it's a similar kind of stigma that one must deal with, and it's a similar kind of decision to make to be out or not out. I remember when I, I first came to, it was, it was my first job, and I was not, as I mentioned, I was not uh, coming out, and I was not proud. Um, I was still really self-stigmatizing and, and having a hard time with it. But as I mentioned, after I you know, was having trouble with my, my leave requests and taking so much time off, it really became necessary for, for me. It became necessary to, to be real with my boss and, and tell her what was going on um, because I felt it would be better or, or easier uh, to explain, you know, that I needed an hour off here and an hour off there and could I please just add them up at the end of the week. Um, it, for me, I, I, I felt like I needed to be out. For, for me as well, it, just, I, it was enough. Enough was enough for me. Um, and so I, I sat down my boss and I started to explain that I was living with mental illness. And I can literally remember hearing her heels click, click, click towards labor relations, not because she didn't want to believe me or wanted to make, you know, anything of it, but just because she did not understand what were her requirements when I'm now telling her that I have mental illness. Would it have been any different if I'd told her about a physical illness? I don't know. I suspect, I suspect it would have been received with a little bit more um, readiness. Um, but she did make her way to labor relations and she did find out what were the requirements. And we were able to work together on how I could work most healthfully at my job. So a success there. Another question uh, that I often uh, think of is, is my illness visible? Why does it matter? Because of privilege. So for me, my illness really isn't visible unless I'm extremely, extremely unwell, but at that point we're talking hospital. So for me on a regular day, this is, this is me on a regular day, and I, I don't know, I, th I think I look pretty good, right? Um, but I am living with a relapse in my depression since last March. And I'm able to look like this and to act like this and to present at work like this. Um, and so for me, my illness really isn't visible. 
And I am privileged that I get to choose whether I tell someone that I'm ill or not. Not everyone is so privileged. Some people, you can read it all over their face. Some people have actual physical effects, shaking, for example, or twitching, uh, that might, you know, give them away. Um, and, and they don't have that privilege. So I'm always really super aware that I do have the privilege to be able to choose whether to expose myself or not. Uh, and, and very aware of those folks that don't. Is there discrimination against people with mental illness in the workplace? Hell yeah, there is. The law does protect you. Uh, you can't be discriminated against on the basis of a mental illness. But the workplace is sometimes a bit like the playground and the rules that should apply don't always seem to apply. And so when I, whenever people ask me, well, you know, is discrimination legal? No, absolutely not. And you are 100% protected against discrimination on the basis of mental illness. But, but. So what if you are struggling with mental illness and you got to the point where you need time off work? So kind of the point where I got to when I was having uh, electroconvulsive therapy. It's very difficult to work while having that treatment. Um, and in Canada, there is a protection of 15 weeks for everyone with every illness, not mental illness specific, but an, anyone. So 15 weeks, that's great. They give you 15 weeks of pay while you convalesce. 15 weeks isn't an awful lot of time for someone struggling with mental illness. As I mentioned, I've been struggling for a year and a half. My 15 weeks would have been long up. Um, and, and that's the case for a lot of mental illnesses. They're very difficult to treat, particularly once you get to the point where you, you need time off. It's very difficult to treat, very refractory, as they say. Um, and so that 15... Um, weeks very quickly ends and you end up having to go back to work ill or taking time away from your job and from your salary. It's probably different in other countries but, but here that's the case. And so it can be, it's great to have that protection but it can be really um, difficult for a lot of folks who are struggling with mental illness. So what do we take from this? What do we recommend when dealing with mental illness at the workplace? My number one recommendation is boundaries. So make sure that you know what your boundaries are in terms of telling other people and particularly work people um, about your mental illness. Do you want to confide in one of your colleagues knowing that it's possible they'll tell your boss? Do you want to confide in your boss knowing it's possible that they'll have stigma and discriminate against you? Maybe you don't, but if you know your colleagues and you know your, your senior leaders well, you might be able to make uh, a, an informed decision that allows you to trust them with that information. Um, but knowing your boundaries is still key and knowing your boundaries with your, your workplace as well. Um, so whether you want to tell them what you want to tell them um, is, is really crucial. So living with mental illness, as perplexing and as difficult as it is, is even more difficult when you are in the workplace. Being able to take care of yourself, take time for yourself, being able to have those boundaries, being able to decide whether you want to disclose your illness or not, knowing your rights that you only have to disclose what is going to work for you and what your limitations are, not necessarily your diagnosis. Having all of these pieces together is exhausting, I realize, but it's worth sitting down if you're living with mental illness and you are newly starting the workplace or you're, you've been at it for a while, 
it's worthwhile sitting down and considering all of these issues and considering how you can best keep yourself healthy. So that is as quick as I could get to mental illness in the workplace. There's so much more we could discuss. Let me know down below if you want to go there and discuss more. Um, but uh, next week we are going to talk about mental health in the workplace, which is a totally different topic that's more looking at how people can keep themselves healthy, uh, how people can talk about mental illness healthily in the workplace. So I look forward to seeing you there for that. Okay, that's truly it for me. Have a great week. Bye. Stigma Crusher.